So uh, everybody who doesn't know Jackie Louie Sherl, she's um, the better looking half of the screen right now that you're, that you're looking at than, than the, my half of it. And um, uh, so I just want to tell a quick story about Jackson, about Jackie. So Jackie and I have known each other for about four and a half years. I started working with Jackson about four and a half years ago, but her journey with Jaxta, which by the way is an official music credits platform, it goes back quite a bit longer than that. So it goes all the way back to 2008. Jackie's background is in the film industry and uh, she was using products in the film industry, like IMDb, for instance, um, to, to do her work. And I think was surprised that we didn't have a similar resource in music. And uh, so in 2013, really started working full time on Jaxta. And in 2015, which is the year before I met her, the company really kicked into gear, got its first investment. And um, uh, so I joined in 2016 as head of partnerships and was involved with Jackie and a, and a small team in bringing on board uh, data acquisition deals with the three major labels and also with Merlin, um, which was a slow and exciting process at the same time. Um, once we had all of that um, official metadata inside the platform, uh, we launched in beta in 2019. And um, uh, we just launched a product called Jax to Pro, which is a now a free product for the rest of 2020. So everybody that's watching this webcast, I encourage you to go to jaxta.com and get your free uh, instance of, of Jaxta Pro, which will allow you to, um, if you're a music creator or a music assistant in some fashion, you're a producer or an engineer, you'll be able to um, claim your profile and also gain a wealth of information about um, about music. So um, I want to hit you with a couple stats and then I'm going to let Jackie take it away. So this is a big website that we've put together. 105 million individual credit entries, uh, over 42 million um, individual pages. So compare that to Wikipedia, um, which is six and a half million English pages, tw over 27 million individual recordings, and 100,000 new credits arriving every single day, seven days a week. Um, you know, that's 20 year, 23 years worth of viewing. So it's a big website, a big, prod, a big project and a big product. And uh, now I want to turn it over to Jackie and get you to tell us why, why pour yourself into this? What, what's important about this to you and to your husband, Lewis, and also your co-founder um, that made you want to build Jackson? Thanks, Dick. Um, it's a good question. I'd have to say a combination of um, absolute belief uh, that credit where credit's due is exceptionally important, having come from a film and television background, and abject naivety. Because if I had known that it was going to take what it would take, you know, seven years later to be where we are today, uh, I, I don't know if I would have gone on the journey i'm certainly glad that we have and in a strange way as as you well know with the men momentum that we're getting now kind of feels like we've just started um but you know if i think back to when i started in film and television i started uh, as a runner and then became you know receptionist office assistant and worked my way up to eventually producing my first feature film sadly never saw the light of day that's another story but you know, in the film industry, everybody uses IMDb every single day to check credits to see who's worked on what and then, you know, call other production managers to say, hey, have you worked with Dan? Have you worked with Dick? You know, um, what are they like on set? Are they good with the crew? Are they good with cast? And you obviously have their, their CV there to be able to see what else they've done and the calibre of their work. And in 2006, when I sort of stopped working in features because we don't have a tentpole film industry in Australia. We get a big film like Star Wars, which was an amazing experience and then nothing for six to 12 months. So I'd go from working as the director or producer's assistant to as, you know Australia's version of Bloomingdale's and folding t-shirts in the men's department because there was no production work. So I started doing music videos. And, you know, in the film industry, your credits are everything. It's absolutely how you get your next gig. 
But through that work, I ended up being headhunted to work at EMI. And at EMI, it was 2006. So to put this into a time capsule, it's when MySpace was ruling the world. And it was sort of how we found out who was doing what on a production. Because at this time, the iPhone was starting to take over the world. And all of that beautiful, deep, rich metadata that we had that told us who was a drummer, who was a bass player, who was the engineer, you know, who's a songwriter, producer on a track, just seemed to vanish almost overnight in our world of digital music. And being married to a music man, a songwriter, record producer, I could see firsthand how this was affecting his career and all of our peers in the industry uh, work that they were missing out on because people didn't know that a certain engineer or mastering engineer had worked on a track or the songwriters were involved or Eric Aranda had record, gu recorded guitar. So it became personal. And I didn't think it would be, uh, again, naivety. I didn't realise how hard it was going to be to build. But that's why you make a start, right? You just make a start. And I made a start with some wireframes and some ideas and concept drawings. And seven years later, I'm proud to say we now have one of the world's largest databases and uh, certain, we believe the, the largest database of official music credits, which is really exciting. And can I tell you, our team, oh my God, it, nothing is done in isolation. We have the most incredible group of people working on this. So, um, so yeah, that's why it's personal for me and for Louis, the, the credits matter. It's how we get our work. <laughs> That's a that's a that's a great synopsis. Um, and for anybody that that didn't figure this out already, uh, Jax is actually based in Sydney, in Australia, and LA. I'm in LA right now. In LA, she's in LA right now. <laughs> uh, yes. So um, the this the space that you moved into, it's a space with um, a number of different players that focus on metadata in one capacity or another. So what makes what makes Jaxta different in that space? What is it that you're doing? Well, first and foremost, I obviously want to take my hat off to the, the big players that are in the industry because they've been there for a long time and they've done incredible work. And, you know, a couple of the really big players would include um, TiVo and Grace Note. And they've been in the space, um, I believe, for about 15 to 20 years. Uh, I think where we're different is that we've built a rev stream into our system that goes back to our data partners. So we have a B2B and a B2C, which I'll explain momentarily, but with those two plays, uh, revenue that we generate, we share back with our data partners. And then there are the updated services. So there's um, the beloved, my beloved Discogs, which I love and is amazing and is probably one of the best used vinyl record stores in the world. And, you know, All Music, which is a fantastic editorial based website. Uh, but in either case there, the data, as far as uh, we're aware and is public knowledge, the, the data is you know, crowdsourced and, and I guess essentially unverified. So where we're different is we have worked with all the majors and obviously we've done a deal with Merlin. We've got probably about 800,000 different labels and publishers supplying data to us now. So the data comes from the custodians of the data and we don't edit the credits. So the data is as accurate as it can possibly be coming from those custodians of the data, because obviously metadata in our world should really be at the heart of the digital music experience. And unfortunately it hasn't been for a long time, but that's shifting. We're really proud to be a part of DDEX, which is the um, body that's setting the metadata standards for the music industry. And it's exciting to see how many labels publishers and different industry associations, performance royalty organizations, and so on and so forth, are really rolling out the DDEX metadata standards because metadata has a long tail and we owe it to the people that create the music to get their credits right. We really do. It's interesting that you focus on, um, on, um, on informational metadata. And I think that the piece that that I have always loved about Jax is the idea of, of this revenue share, which focuses on um, not just on ownership data, which is pretty good in the music industry, but also on informational metadata. So there's really never been much of, an, um, much of a need uh, for yes. the music industry to get his act together and information yeah. to talk about um, informational metadata. 
Yeah, you're right, Dick, because there's, there's the ownership data, like the song title, the song name, the ISRC, and all of that data is pretty, pretty damn good, which is great. But then there's the informational metadata, you know, who's the produ who are the producers, the engineers, the session musicians. And I guess because there hasn't really been a fiscal reason for it to exist, it's, it, it might be one of the reasons why it's all over the place and it didn't have a focus on it. But, you know, <laughs> it's, if you think about everybody that's on this call, I would imagine almost all of us have a LinkedIn page. It's our, you know, digital CV these days. And not a lot of engineers or producers, uh, songwriters or session musicians have a LinkedIn page. It's not really, um, I guess, the forum for them. But it's really important that they have their credits out there and that the credits are accurate because it's their calling card. It's how they get more work. And it's also a, a way for them to be paid. Um, you know, we're not permitted to state publicly who, but we have some very serious uh, royalty organisations that are using JAXTA now daily as their number one research tool to fact check who's worked on what. And then they go through that process to help people get paid. So accurate credits have never been more important. So can you, can you talk a little bit about, um, I, I wanna get into the business model of JAXTA, um, but if, before we go there, can you just talk a little bit about um, how the site's laid out. So you have a, a free site and then you also have a professional version of the site. Yeah, um, I'd like to thank Variety because they compared us to uh, the IMDB for music, which was really cool. So the free site is, is I guess, the equivalent of, of IMDB. You can go in and you can search kind of anybody and then you go down the rabbit hole of just being able to click and click and click and click. So you can go into a release, into a track, into a work, see who's worked on it, click on their name, see everything that they've worked on, and then you know, click on those releases. And again, just keep exploring and going down and down and down. Um, it's kind of like the best crate digging, digital crate digging experience you can imagine. Uh, and then there's Jaxta Pro. So Jaxta Pro was created um, for a couple of reasons. One, because I wanted to have a tool, uh, selfishly, uh, that would help save me time on my day-to-day -day of all the different types of research that I was doing in my various roles when I worked down in music. So there's an element to it that gives you great market insights and stats. We've um, highlighted the top 20 markets around the world and you can drill down and go into a really detailed directory for each market uh, and a great calendar of events. I mean, obviously right now we're in a kind of depressing state there in terms of, you know, live concerts and conferences with the exception of today, <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> yay, <laughs> um, being cancelled. But what we've been doing is we've been updating the calendar with all the virtual uh, conferences, which is cool and updating that daily. But the other side to pro, which is really personal to myself and Louis, is that those 105 million individual credits that we have in JAXTA, all those people can go in find their profile and claim it. And then they can put their bio in, their, the contact details of their team, update all of their social um, links, their website links, their DSP links, and then they can also set a feature catalog. And what we've been hearing from a large number of a &Rs all over the world is that they're now using this to connect with songwriters and producers and engineers and others uh, to get them to work on projects that, that they're figuring out over Zoom, which is incredible. So it really gives them a very beautiful uh, visual CV, if you will, and it showcases everything that they've worked on and their best work. So it's a great way for music people to be able to highlight uh, you know, what they've been working on. And they can set chart alerts. There's a great chart feature bias, of course, where you can go in and see you know, what's happening across Apple, Shazam, um, Spotify, Obviously, if you want to drill down and get metrics analytics, you'd use a chart metric because they're amazing. This is just meant to give you a snapshot. But being able to go in and set a chart alert for a viola player yeah. or, you know, someone who played bass or a songwriter or producer, let alone the artist, which is amazing, that's a game first. And um, that's probably one of the features that I'm also totally biased about and think is fantastic. But, yeah, it's a tool to save people time in the industry. Okay, and, and maybe my last question, um, and then if there are any questions from the audience, we can take it, is can you just touch for a minute on the business model behind Jack's set and about, uh, obviously there's a, a B and C piece of it, 
There's also a B2B piece that's directly connected to the revenue share that we referred to earlier. So how does that work? And why does official informational metadata that you know, clearly, clearly you're very focused on trying to um, make the focus of this product, why does it matter? That's a great question. So in terms of our business model, we have a couple of business models. We've just um, given Jax to Pro as a freemium product until at least the end of this year. And then next year, we'll probably move a section of it behind the paid wall as was originally intended, but it just makes sense for it to be a, a free resource right now as people are updating their, their digital CV, if you will, during this time. Uh, so one of our revenue streams is a subscription model, so that's been pushed into 21. And there's the API, which is um, really specifically for the music industry. So we're in very lengthy conversations with a number of DSPs and music companies that need a f official data that's been mapped together, deduplicated, and then deep linked. So if you think about the smart speaker experience, obviously being able to ask them who played drums on this track and have the smart speaker respond, Steve Jordan, Jordan instead of according to Wikipedia, and then being able to have that smart speaker create a playlist by Steve Jordan is pretty appealing. So the companies that we're talking to, they need to know the data isn't crowdsourced. They need to know that it comes from the custodians of the data for legal reasons to make sure that it's as accurate as it can possibly be. But we also provide a service. If you're on the site and you check it out, it's jaxsta.com. You'll notice on every page, there's a feedback ticket. About halfway down the page on the right-hand side, there's a green feedback ticket. If you ever notice that your credits are incorrect or that you know, the information's missing or it's not, you know, there's an issue with it, you can log a ticket. It goes into our JIRA system and it gets allocated to a real human being. So not a bot, not AI, but a real individual will go in and look at that ticket. We do a forensic search across our extensive database uh, sometimes we have to go back to the individual that's logged the ticket and say, hey, can you give us some more information? But I'm really proud to say that we have corrected at least 1,200 credits in the last couple of weeks by working with our amazing partners on feeding them correct information. And you know the thing that's so cool about that? It doesn't just get fixed for us. It's then permanently fixed forever across in their data the chain universe. across the digital universe. So that is, you know, something we're really proud to be working on with our partners, our data partners. They're the coolest bunch of labels and, and publishers and associations ever, and we, uh, we love them all. They're awesome. And there it is. Well, thank Brian, back to you. Yeah, we've run a little long, but thank you so much, Jackie. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Brian.